entire fuck. Like, what are you doing? Put that on her shirt, by the way. What the entire fuck? Uh, Side note, I got to start drinking out of my merch mug. Yeah. On camera. <laughs> Sell a couple more of those. Link in bio. <laughs> Welcome to Playing House, the podcast about keeping your relationship sexy and secure. I'm Coulter. And I'm Dominique. And we are a real couple who really want you to experience the love that you deserve. On today's episode, why your partner is actually doing that stupid shit you hate on purpose. Questions you should be asking each other before you move in together. And also, kids on leashes. What do we think in 2023? But first, how are you this week? I am good. I saw the Renaissance movie. And it was exactly what my soul needed. There was a scene. For, so first of all, it was reliving the concert all over again, obviously. Yeah. Um, that was incredible because it's been since June, July, um, since we saw her. So, you know, like your 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 soul needs that, that like revamp, that reboot every once in a while. I'm surprised the date isn't like tattooed into your heart, right? Like you're <sighs> even above like, I would say the day you went to see Beyonce, mm-hmm. the birth of your child. Okay, that's a stretch. That's a stretch. The day they're we close. got married. They're, they're close. And then like a fourth other thing. <laughs> that was giving birth, renaissance, wedding day. But we're gonna we're gonna renew our vows. So that it's, it's it's okay, right? Like it, I would say, okay, okay, okay. Giving birth, proposal. Proposal bigger than the actual wedding day. I'm just digging wow. a deeper and deeper here. I, anyways. The Renaissance was incredible. The movie was amazing. There's a specific scene where she's because it's like it's a documentary at the same time because she's showing behind the scenes. Um, I thought it was just like a concert movie because isn't that what the Taylor Swift yeah, movie is? Well, I have I don't know. No, but I just mean like about that, isn't that just sorry. like 17 hours of Taylor Swift on stage singing songs? I don't know. I I don't know. Okay. I'm, I'm not the one. Shout out to that, but it's not me. Um, Beyonce movies now, uh, just like. Um, what was that movie called? Uh, is, she, anyways, a few of her concerts now, including like um, Homecoming, when she's showing her concert, she always shows like behind the scenes footage. Yeah. Um, so there's a part where she's like showing that she's the director of, of everything and like she's watching as it's happening and she's giving instructions as a director does. Um, and she keeps saying like as a woman, you know, if I feel like I have to explain things six nine twelve times for people to finally take action even beyonce even beyonce so if you're having trouble if you're having trouble communicating things just remember that queen b is as well it, it's not even a matter of her having trouble explaining things like she's very clear in her directions it's like, like being undermined um and so there's a scene where she's like i like the people who work for her well, yeah. Dude, so, like, you're the boss. The crew, like the camera people saying like, oh, w- what you want for the shot doesn't exist. It needs a, a, a size of a lens that doesn't exist. And she's like, actually, I looked it up and it does in fact exist. And she's like naming off like the equipment. I have no she idea. She's came prepared. Damn. Okay. And it's like, wow, like Beyonce even has to go through that. You yeah. know what I mean? And she's like, there's a scene where she's just like breaking down the law and, and she's like telling them what to do. And she's like, and that's it go forth and do it and it's not the first time we're seeing this from beyonce footage of her like i don't feel the need to give more instructions if my original instructions haven't been applied just yet like it's 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 amazing that you gotta earn round two it's a global experience women having to almost humble ourselves and downplay our knowledge in order to be taken seriously like she can't come straight up and be like i know this and I need you to do this that I know can be done. She, ha- she has to like sit there, put up with this guy's bullshit, having him mansplain to her, this doesn't exist. And then she can that say, takes some, I know it does. That takes some balls to mansplain to Beyonce. That, can we give that guy his flowers? That takes some balls. Oh to be fair, like, yeah, it's his job. He's the crew member. He knows, you know, the camera work or whatever Apparently he, was, he, doesn't, he was in charge though. of. Well, that's the thing, right? Anyway, anyway, Beyonce. Okay, girl, just. Would you watch was, the movie again? Because you'd, uh, yeah, con- you'd see definitely. the concert again. Absolutely. I would, I'd watch the movie again because just love the damn concert, love the album. Um, and then always seeing Beyonce behind the scenes and seeing her as, as a human is just, it's, it's, what I, my, it's what my soul needs. Just it's, it's inspiration and the motivation to like make my visions come to life. It's excellent. Is it kind of like for some people maybe seeing like a documentary of Jesus? And you're uh, like, oh my God, like he's on camera. Like, hey, Jesus, what's up? J-Bone, J-Money, J-Sauce, what's going on? J-Sauce. Where you been? 
Yo, someone... I've been trying that body and blood. You nailed that recipe. <laughs> oh, that wasn't that wasn't intentional, but you did nail it. Wow. So um, perhaps as someone who studied ministry, I I've never heard him. I went to Catholic school. To... Okay. So I think I'm pretty qualified as well to accidentally make a make a nail to the cross pun about Jesus. Wow. So that's how my week's going. Beyonce. Very excited about that. Yeah. Um, the holiday season is also in full swing. It's the beginning of December as we're recording this. You finally put up the lights after being begged for three weeks. Shout sure. out to you. Um, but they're up though. But they're up. Yeah. And so I put them up on the outside of the house. Yeah. And they're up. So. And also, if we could add a little bit of context here, today in the car, you were like, after we went, after I drove the family to get pictures of Santa Claus, by the way, after yesterday. Sorry, when can I, we pause there? Because no, after we can't. I we can't scheduled tell. photos with Santa Claus and scheduled a custom call for our three-year-old to get a call from Santa saying, hi, Nia, can't wait to see you. It's been a year. You're three years old now. Got everybody dressed had tires in my car, so could not drive us. You then drove us. I put the... I put the tires in your car also. Uh huh. Yeah. How did you put the tires in my car? With my hands. You put them standing up so that they were rolling in the back of my car and smashing into my back window. Didn't you not even book the appointment properly? I did. No, it was a there was a glitch in the system. He says it happens quite often, which is. Fun, but you Fun had a receipt me. that said like this is your this is your uh, appointment time, right? It doesn't change the fact that he had no space for me. Hmm. Burn it to the ground for legal reasons. That's a joke. So anyway, after we were in the car, after I drove our asses to see Santa Claus mm-hmm. at the Oshawa Mall, you were like, "Oh, I need to go and like get more lights tomorrow because like you didn't plan to buy enough lights." And uh, drove our asses straight to Walmart. We're doing it now. What a hero. and then I put those up. What a Thank hero. you. Thank so how you. many lights did you buy and how, how many Christmas decorations did you plan for exactly? I can't speak to the planning, but as far right. as the buying, as you know, uh, we have a joint bank account. Uh-huh. So I did pay for all of them, just like you did. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're a hero. So much Thank like, you very much. Much like Beyonce, I have yeah. to... Um, deal- That's for me. So you're welcome. Oh, it's still going, eh? Is there a boo button? Uh, actually, there might be. There a needs boo to button. be. It's necessary. What do we got here? Oh, again for me. Yep. Okay. Thank you for everybody. Uh, and your <laughs> thank you <laughs> tremendous for support. I need a boo though. There might be more in here. Oh, you didn't program this? No. Oh, you can censor something. Oh, that's fun. And then, I don't know what this button does. Oh, I can make you sound. Do you want to sound like a large robot or a small robot? This large. is just an ad for the Roadcaster Pro 2, by the way. Large? Okay. Oh, I'm a robot too. Oh, that's awful. I hate that so much. Oh, you're not a robot. Yikes. I don't want to be a robot. I want you to be a robot. I don't, I don't want that. So please. I'm the small robot. I want to make you things. Uh... If you have clicked away from this video, I understand because that was awful. I don't. This is great content. So the lights are up. You're <laughs> welcome. Holiday season. And you're considering what? I want to get Nia an iPad. I think it's time. Um, I do want her to start learning like phonics and spelling. And like it, it's time for her to um, prepare for junior kindergarten. So I think that tablets, it doesn't necessarily have to be an iPad. Tablets can be a really cool Yeah, let's tool save a couple of bucks like, here. Right? For learning through play. Um, I wouldn't necessarily like download YouTube and Netflix and all those things onto there because it's just like the temptation is going to be there um, in that case. Um, but I, I think it'll be a good gift for her. I worry what it's going to turn me into. And like we often accuse like we'll call, you know what an iPad kid is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm going to turn into an iPad dad, an iDad, if you will. Copyright and trademark. I feel like it's going to be easy to go. I need 10 minutes. Just grab your iPad. Yeah. Well, and And it's not like we don't do that with a a laptop, though. Yeah, but we got to go like, do I I need silence so bad 
that I'm going to trust our kid with my $2,000 laptop. I mean, again, she spilled water all over mine and it was typing by itself. Oh, yeah. We talked about this last week on the pod. Yeah. A couple weeks ago. It's it's back to normal. It's working again. Absolutely. Hey. Hey. Love that. Yeah. I'm so tired. tired. Uh, But we also do with our phones, right? So even if I'm like working on the computer and she wants to watch something, <clears throat> I'll pass her my phone and said, like, hey, or watch, watch like an episode of Little Einsteins, for example. So at least this way, she has programmed. I'm not going to download kid games onto my phone. I'm just not going to do it. This way, I download like, Adult learning games. A game. Get, get some Fallout on there. Onto this Get some tablet. Halo. <laughs> Call of Duty. So she can learn, you know, patterns and spelling and phonics and all that good stuff. Mm. Um, yeah, I think it's I, I I I might just go ahead and do it. Yeah? Yeah. Without me? Okay. What's your opinion? Other than the whole iPad dad, iDad idea. iDad's a great idea. I feel like that would be like if does Disney Channel still make movies? Like Smart House or Xenon, the Warrior Space Princess or whatever. I feel like iDad would be a Disney uh I'm pretty sure that exists. channel movie. I'm pretty sure that exists. Yes, but the, it would be like the 90s or early 2000s version. Greatest Disney Channel movie of all time, by the way, Halloween Town. Followed, I would say, a close second, Halloween Town 2, Calabar's Revenge. <laughs> Halloween Town 3 and 4, objectively trash. But the first two, my God, they knew what they were doing. They left it all there. They left it all in the first and second film. Actually, they left it all in the first film. Had a little bit left for the second. It was still flawless. And the third and the fourth, just garbage. Also, the fourth particularly bad because a new actor plays Marnie. Yes, I said actor instead of actress because I think that saying actress is sexist. So, I dad does not exist. Okay. Well, it might now. You're welcome, Earth. (laughs) So, yeah, I think I'm going to get her that for Christmas. Okay. What's the budge? What's the budge on a kid pad? How much does that cost? I who knows? Like iPads, at one point they cost a couple hundred. But give me like the cheap. Give me the tablet that's so cheap that like it says on the box that like the Chinese Communist Party is just is stealing all of your data, which they will anyway, regardless of the device you get. But or like Russia or North Korea. Okay. Like they just get to like spy on your family. Well, I'm pretty sure you can get like eighty dollar tablets. Yeah, that's that's the one. I don't know that they come with like the protective casing that a child would need. Right. You know, be great is if they had an iPad case that was edible or like a jawbreaker. Like you're not necessarily chewing it, but like that that keeps them occupied even longer. An iPad that's wrapped in food, it's entertainment and a snack. They're just like, here you go. Kid disappears for like five hours. Big week for me. Finally got to check in with a friend of mine who's like, hasn't been doing super well lately. Been really overwhelmed with work and stuff. And I think the two of us can relate with that. Yeah. He does the same thing the two of us do where we just like lean into it hard. You're like, you don't want to have it hanging over your head. And so you just do it. Absolutely. And he... is burnt out. He's burnt out. And also like, and said this to me straight up, Cause I'm like, Hey, I miss you. Like, are you doing okay? At this point there were three or four unanswered text messages. And I just said, this is a wellness check-in mm. how we doing here. And he sent me back a couple of paragraphs and said, mm. uh, I just like, I gotta be honest. I'm kind of putting friends on the, I'm not kind of, I'm putting everybody on the back burner on purpose right now. I just don't Which have the time fair. for this. It's fair. Sometimes you gotta do that too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause sometimes people need from you what you just don't have to offer and you just need to put it all into yourself or put it all into your project and like not that that's healthy um but sometimes you got to do it spread yourself to offer to fill other people's cup at the same time that's that's just as unhealthy so i get him needing to like put everybody else on red for a minute and sometimes there's nothing to say like in 2020 when people are in 2021 and people are reaching out to me how you doing dom well, my husband is still going through chemo. I Dying have, of cancer. I there's no there's no new news. I I have nothing to say to you. I don't want to sit on the phone with you. I don't want to explain like just be the sad sack who's bringing you down. And maybe you were looking for a light hearted conversation. I don't want to be that person either. So I understand him choosing to like kind of isolate himself for 
for a minute. Hopefully it's just a minute. You know what I can't stand? Speaking of like people checking in when, when I was dying of cancer, anytime you're going through something difficult and people go, let me know what you need. Let me know what I can do. Mm -hmm. It's like, shut the fuck up. Oh, truly though. Let me know what, let me know what you need from me. No, (laughs) let me know what I can do for you. (laughs) I'm so angry. I fucked it up. (laughs) Let me know what I can do for you. So, like, now I, as the person going through the thing, have to come up with, like, a list of chores for you. Oh, let me know if you need me to do this. Just, like, do it. But here's the alternative. They show up and do things that you do not want from them. Like, showing up and and here, here's a bunch of food that you don't eat, which is a lovely gesture. But had you just told them, hey, you know what? It'd be, it'd be great if you could send me an Uber Eats gift card so that I don't have to think about dinner tonight. Versus, but who's gonna say that? What can I do for you? Uh, can you send me fifty bucks? <laughs> can I? <laughs> hey, the money in your bank account. Can I have some of it, please? Not all of it. Although maybe all you got's fifty bucks. In which case, I'll take all of it. I mean, I wish I had that kind of boldness. I wish I could straight up <laughs> they like, were gonna say, I, I wish I had that kind of money. I'm <laughs> like, bro, me too. Shit, I could use fifty bucks right now. <sighs> so so I just said, friend, yeah. I was like, I'll check in closer to the. I'll give you all the space you need because you've told me you need that. Yeah. And uh, I'll check in closer to the weekend. Um, don't even need a response right now. I yeah. love you. You're the best. Thinking about you. And then I checked in on Friday, so like pretty much a full week later. And uh, he was like, "I'm doing better now." We had a chance to chat today, yeah. a couple hours ago. Uh, that's my boy. He's the be- he's the best. And uh, I'm happy that he's doing better. He's still kind of going through it a little bit right now, but it seems like a couple of projects have been knocked off his list. Nice. We talked a lot about. Um, being grateful that you've got a ton of creative opportunities, but also feeling super burnt out and kind of resentful of yeah, the fa- kind of work. like resentful of your own talent in a sense, because you're pissed off that you keep agreeing to new jobs. Yep, 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 yep. But you're like, I want to do this. I want to prove to myself I can do this. Mm-hmm. I also like the cash is great. I've committed to this. In yeah. So many ways I've committed my time to this. I've committed my talent to this and I've committed dollars totally on the line. So yeah, I get it. And there's a healthy way to do it. And I don't think anybody on earth has mastered it. Somebody out there has got to do it mm. or have, has had to have mastered it at least. I, I'm not one of them. Yeah. But I'm going to keep reading these productivity books until I find that person. Nice. You le- Are you leaning in? That was very are you leaning 2013. In? That's very 2013. So I'm very much of, leaning back out. Uh, <laughs> I am falling on the floor of that crowd of millennials who were born into like not born into, but graduated into the lean in economy, the lean in workforce. You just got to like girl women, boss your way to exactly the top. Like that, those sorts of, of books. Um, and I love that Gen Z is coming back and is kind of just like, I am not doing that nonsense. I am not going to lean in and put my entire life into my job and make my identity my work. Like I'm going to show up, I'm going to work nine to five. If like that. This, right? This Ugh. quiet quitting concept, which is just doing your job in the amount of hours you're paid to do your job, which is exactly what you should be doing. My dad and I were talking about that last night after the Santa Claus parade that I drove us to. He was like, oh, you know, this like I, a lot of people are quiet quitting. And I said, no, a lot of people realize that you can work your ass off for a company and it's very rare now for a company to have any loyalty to anybody. And like, these are corporations. They're not human beings. They are faceless. They are soulless. They're just like, they're not bad. They're not good inherently either way. But if a company's saying, Hey, we've agreed to this amount of money and this amount of responsibilities. And then you're like, Hey, can I have more money? And they go, you cannot have more money. Why are you then going, why are you then getting in trouble for not giving them more exactly yeah do your job do it well job with excellence absolutely and to like to make yourself proud sure but do you need to always put in extra hours take on like uh, side projects and 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 do like internal volunteer work and all this different stuff no unpaid labor volunteering your time absolutely yeah if you want to do it great but like i don't think that leads to much anymore unless it's like you want the self-satisfaction and like that's beautiful but you also need to be like Except that that might be all that you get from that. Like you can volunteer in all of the different like safety, workplace safety groups and uh, representation groups and, and, and lead like feminist book clubs and stuff internally. You're probably not going to get a raise from that. No, you're not going to get a raise from that. Listen, if you want to make it to the top, there's three things you got to do. The three G's. Gatekeep, girl, girl boss, boss, and gaslight. All right. And with right. that... 
I hate it here. This is the segment of the program where we take some headlines and just reflect on what a hellscape current year is. Weaponized incompetence. What is it? I mean, annoying. Yes. Terrible. Absolutely. absolutely. Can I try to define it? Yeah, go ahead. The way I would define it is as uh, failing to, like, not knowing about a certain subject and just choosing not to gain any more information, especially as it pertains to your, your partner, and allowing your partner to bear that full load. So, for example, if you know nothing about Montessori school, Sorry, you just you said full load and you look so beautiful and I just got really excited for <laughs> hopefully later. No incompetence there. I'm sure you might beg to differ, but I think I know what I'm doing. So as an example, you knew nothing about Montessori school and I really wanted Nia to attend a Montessori daycare. So you decided she's not going to do that. I don't like the concept of Montessori schools based on the little information you had. And then so it was up to me to research, to go to these different interviews, to do, do different tours, to get her in there. And then you got to be like, well, I don't know anything about this. So then you, if you, this is what you want to do, you go forth and do it. So that's a way of weaponizing your incompetence. And I'm sure there are thousands of examples where I've done the same. Minimum. Probably hundreds of thousands. For example, like taking care of my car. Yeah. Weaponize that incompetence to the fullest, but still but babe, somehow I'm taking. You're so it much better at it than I am. To get my tire swapped, I don't know why I should take. I loaded them into your vehicle. My ass and do that shit. That seems then ridiculous. Then the fellas over at the tire place are swapping them out and uh, keeping them there. I think, but even if they sent them back, I would then unload them from your car. But you, it's not like, like a I gentleman. Said, you have to do that. I like you choose to do that, and yeah. that's very kind of you, and I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And on that day, his heart grew two sizes. <laughs> what is weaponized incompetence? This unfair division of labor could be a relationship deal breaker. Mm. And essentially it's it's mostly dudes that are doing this. Absolutely. Can we be honest? Yeah. Especially in the context of like dating and marriage and raising a child. And housekeeping. And that was another thing I did forever, which was just like, you're not like, you're not necessarily actively doing a shitty job. But you know that, like, if you do kind of a shitty job, the other person's just going to finish it. Thank you for and they're just finally gonna, like, admitting that. They're just going to, like, not ask you to do it as much. Can I, can, I, can I tell you a memory of mine? So we were living together for probably a couple months at this point, okay? And I noticed when it was time for you to clean, you would kind of just, like, go to another room and stay there for a while. And then I'd come and nothing, nothing was changed. I saw you watching the board. I'm like, what is he looking for? I was like, the writing's really small. I'm like, which one's the sad trombone? <laughs> but I nailed it. So finally, one day, like, I decided to follow you. I'm like, it's time to clean. This guy's off to go in the corner again. I'm is this when you took all the pictures idiot. of me? No, this that's another time. Okay. So obviously, years later, work. when I learned. Oh my gosh. So I'm following you. And then I noticed that you were just like, you were just picking up random items and just like, holding them for a while to like pretending to move and clean. The, and I'm like, what the entire fuck? Like, what are you doing? Put that on our shirt, by the way. What the entire fuck? Uh, Side note, I got to start drinking out of my merch mug. Yeah. On camera. <laughs> Sell a couple more of those. Link in bio. <laughs> Damn. It's a lot of, um, it's a lot of dudes doing this also when, like I mentioned a second ago, when you're raising a kid, like, mm. Oh, I don't really change diapers because I'm not that good at it or uh, anything. It, like, yeah. it's, it's just yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. It's, well, I'm not going to like play with the kids as much when I get home because like, oh, I'm, I'm just tired, like tired. And, and it's like, so much from me. motherfucker, do you not think she's tired too? Absolutely. Whether or not Absolutely. she's like at home during the day with kids yeah. and yeah. you're at work, which is like the majority. I shouldn't say the majority. I think. Yeah, it's probably the majority. Yeah, it's it's, it's an and a large reason is because women are paid less, and so when you're like, what makes more sense? Which one of us is going back to work? Oh, it's the dude. Plus the cost of childcare. Listen, we can go down a whole rabbit hole with that one of like the, the the misalignment and division of labor and why so much of the child rearing falls on the woman. Sorry, you just said go down a hole, and you look so beautiful. Oh my! God. I'm really hoping you know for after the pod. Should we take a break? We need a we need a commercial break just so we can go like bang off camera. Really? Yeah. Anyways, um, we're on Patreon? Question mark. <laughs> OnlyFans? Question mark. 
there are tons of and then maybe it's just because I'm a mom. So this is like what my newsfeed kind of looks like. But you'll see tons of videos of women like, oh, uh, waking up, preparing to bear the brunt. And I'm so nervous about using verbs with you now because how are you going to misconstrue that one? But like women waking this is up. It's a serious conversation. <laughs> I don't know why you're making, why are you laughing? This is serious. Why are you making fun of this? Women waking up ready to bear the load of the entire holiday season while the man gets to just wake up and be thanked for all the gifts under the, the tree. Meanwhile, so like, you're like, oh yeah, you're welcome for the, what What the fuck is What is, is that? Exactly. So What's like, in that thing over there? Planning what the de decorations are going to look like around the house, buying those decorations, begging to have them put up one day, hopefully. If I can, just for a moment, do you really want me selecting Christmas decor? No, but you can, you can participate in it. And then, for example, getting the... The Christmas photos taken. This is a very specific example to our family. Not everybody celebrates the holiday this way, but like not everybody's Christmas married photos. to such a big piece of shit as Dominique. Apparently, oh, barely. I'm just saying, but like obviously, like I love you, and I get like the is it obvious? Haven't been a huge. You, you don't care about the holidays as much as I do. That I get. I actually like. I get really anxious around the holidays, right? And I think that. Maybe this isn't so much like historically has not been so much weaponized incompetence when it comes to the holidays, but you get your fucking ass outside and hang the lights in the freezing I cold. Tried. Okay, I tried. I absolutely tried. I'm just failed. not tall enough. But babe, That's you're so it. much better at it than I am. No, I was gonna hire somebody. I tried. Weaponized I'm too incompetence. Short. And then I was going to go on Facebook Marketplace and hi and get some dude to come. I'm assuming a dude because you got to be tall enough. And sexist. To wow. Come. <laughs> Maybe I want you to leave me so I can be with an ally next time. I would love to hire a woman to come put up my, I would Same. love to hire Full stop. a non-binary person to come put, I just need the lights to get put up. That's it. And they're up. It's three weeks later, but absolutely. Yes, they're up. Yes, they're up. They're up. I like put it down upstairs though, right? Always go down first. So always, every single time. Thank you very much. Whoa, what's that? Man, the whole gang. Thanks, guy. I appreciate it. You can't see them. They're off camera, but. What's that? <laughs> yeah. What about setting up this podcast studio? This is just turning into like petty squabbling. That, that's all this is. I washed the dishes last. Like. That actually no, but, might be like <laughs> a podcast just about a married couple like <laughs> bitching at each other. That would do numbers. Isn't that what Should this we is? Could, if comment below if you want us to just <laughs> turn this into like into like the divorce proceedings. I get, remember I had a notebook? I used to keep a notebook where every time you pissed me off, I would just write down the Just the one notebook the though. All right. <laughs> Looks like I did a pretty good job. Now I know where the buttons are. I'm I don't gonna, even have to look. I'm going to make No, point to me. get off, like, off, ugh. off. Get away from this. See, this is another thing that I set up. <laughs> Weaponized incompetence. Just like, just try. So many relationships, it's like, just fucking try. I think, like, it, it goes both ways as well, because I think it's a matter of not wanting to be a nag for the person who... You? <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. For the person who is having to deal with all this... Um, and, and you and I have had this conversation too, where it's like, I don't want to have to tell you to do these things. Like, I don't want to have to tell you, Hey, the dishwasher needs to be, um, unloaded. Yeah. It's like, it clearly just, is like, full of dishes. No. And do those things. Yeah. Like, like don't assume, Oh, she's going to do it. Cause yeah, I am going to do it cause nobody else is doing it. So I'm always going to be the default, but that's the issue when you're the default person it becomes really hard to set those boundaries and start pushing back. And like, don't default to me on these sure. things. Take the initiative and do it yourself too. But you also become a nag having to switch that around, having to push back. I think the, uh, the same could be applied to like, uh, not even chores, but like planning dates, for instance, mm. or uh, like initiating when you're doing mommy, daddy business upstairs or daddy, daddy, or mommy, mommy, or they, them, they, them. People kind stuff Having upstairs. sex, wow. You know, there can be some weaponized incompetence there. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Do you know what I mean? 
Nobody in this room, legitimately. But also, I know what I'm doing. Um, you're so, babe. You're <laughs> so much better at it than I am. I would if I could reach. <laughs> also, I'm regretting bringing up this <laughs> headline. Yikes! I really took a couple of hits in there. For the record, like we've cleaned up the behavior. Oh, the most like the longest and most dramatic drink. If you're listening and not watching, you can hear the the capping screwed on. <sighs> You nice and refreshed? Are you quenched? I am. I am. I am. Uh, yeah, th- like you're definitely doing better. You, you are definitely doing better. And it's a lot of like, it's both of us learning to communicate. It's me learning to express and, and, and talk to you in a way that's not just like, I've allowed this to happen for months. And now this little, little thing that you've done has been the, the straw that's broken the camel's back. And I'm going to cuss you the fuck out now. Coulter, don't do it. Coulter, don't do it. What are you going to do, if, do, you gonna do, do if I press the applause button? I will lunge over this damn table. Coulter, and do not. That's not a bad thing necessarily. Coulter. So yes, we have definitely improved. Do not, do not. It do would it. just be such a great way to like move on to the next headline, though. No, now you don't get it. Thank you. Cool. It's gonna, it's gonna pop up <laughs> when you least expect it. You know what that feels like. What? Things to ask before you move in together. A couple of questions. This is from Forbes. One of them is, I've been waiting to discuss moving in with my partner, but they already seem so settled where they are right now. So when you're with somebody and you're like, do we make this? Okay, we've been living together for over a decade at this point. Yeah. So are you rolling your eyes because like... You oh, no, because feel... I, I hate that. I hate okay. these types of like dealing... In, being in a relationship where you you are not in the same headspace it's like you're ready you're ready to move on you're ready to go to this next chapter and then this person that you're with is just so comfortable where they are and they don't seem to have a plan for the relationship i'm I, that pisses me off especially if they live with their parents which like no shade whatsoever <laughs> but there seems to be this extra layer of well like i think especially for men mm-hmm. like you're like still kind of a mama's boy mm-hmm. you're still kind of a, you know you just like you're happy sleeping what are you in, doing your, here? in your in your teen bed. And there's something the race car bed. Like, listen, I get the cum tissues. Whoa. I understand that. Like for many, it's 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 a it's a financial and accessibility sure. thing. I get it. Like we don't have coming out of school, for example, it's not a matter of you have a degree, you have a <clears throat> diploma, now you have your dream job. That's just not the reality anymore. Where's my voice going? So for many, it's a matter of like <laughs> I don't make enough to afford rent. I don't make enough to afford a down payment on a house. So living with my parents is my only option and, and is a. Sorry, just you're super like looking at the camera shot. Can you sit up a little bit? That's better. Keep going. So living with my parents is the only financially feasible option for yeah. me here. And hopefully this is like a shorter term solution, but it's the solution right now. That's one thing. It is another thing when you're just like, ah, let's stay here. My mom likes us. My mom gives us space. Ah, my dad, he still cooks for us. Why would we change things up? It's just like, what is your next chapter? And what does that look like with your partner? Is it a true partnership? Or are you looking for a roommate who can also have their laundry done by your parents? Like, it's all, it's, it's weird to me, man. Are you saying, like, instead of us finding a place together, let's say I'm the hypothetical dude in this situation, You'll just like move in and we'll both sleep in this, in the race car bed. Yeah. Yikes. Absolutely. And again, if it's because there's a short term plan where it's let's stay here, let's save up. Save up a couple of bucks. Let's help the parents while we're here. Like we can help them around the house as they're aging. And and in turn, we're getting help because we don't have to pay rent, for example. Like that's a plan. A plan has a date. A plan has a time. Smart goals, right? Okay. It's specific. Mart. That's the other. Specific, measurable, actionable, realistic, timely. Okay? If you have none of those things and you're kind of like, yeah, we're happy here. These are my, this is my duvet from the 10th t- grade. That, that's, that's different. Okay. Navy blue, by the way. Though? Navy blue. <laughs> it's always navy blue. Although maybe if they, and they're, oh, and the mom does the laundry, right? It's always making dinner and stuff. Right. It's like, so who who's benefiting other than you in this situation? I know a guy moved out uh, of his parents' place, I guess, like in his early 20s. And uh, the family was still like dropping off prepared food all the time. 
like well, multiple that's, times that's a just, week. That's just lovely. That's if nice. Your parents just like are, are those kind of people and want to provide for you. I get it. And again, if it's like financially, you don't have any other options. I get it. It's when that's not the case and you're making bank and you're kind of just like, ah, yeah. why leave? Second question that you should ask before you move in together. I would love to live with my partner, but I'm worried that they'll feel less independent if we move in together. That's a struggle, like maintaining your maintaining your individuality, right? Maintaining your personality. And that's also, I think, I think that gets harder the longer you've been together. And actually, I think it's harder the longer you've lived together. It's difficult sometimes to like cleave apart, to just like have your own, have a couple of friends that are just yours. Mm. And I find men are worse than women at this typically because the older men get like the less effort they put into finding friends. And that's why you see so many dudes that like, They'll get divorced and they have no friends. They have nobody to talk to. And they're just like sad, single dudes. Should have behaved. You know? Well, I mean, that's like, that's, I, I assume in the majority of cases, but also hashtag not all single, sad, do divorce dads, right? Should have behaved. So. No, like everyone should behave. I just mean like maybe they were the victim in this situation. Oh, Look yeah, at you victim possible. shaming. Victim <laughs> shame. We're assuming that the woman has to be the the evil person. In who, this who said that he was married to a woman? Wow. Well, you said wow. the man as if there's only one. The man that left. That, that is, he didn't, he okay. didn't include that well, part. Anyway. What's the next question? No, before we get to that, like, do you feel like you have some difficulty uh, feeling independent sometimes? Oh, my God. Absolutely. Yeah? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's hard. It's like, especially when you get to the point where, like, you're combining bank accounts and it's, oh, it's hard. Like that first, when do we start paying out of the same bank account? When we moved in together. We moved, like our first apartment like together. 2012. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A couple of fresh little 21 year olds. But Oof. I feel like we still Oof. had, we, we had a, we had separate bank accounts still, but when it was time to like pay rent, then we'd put it into a joint mm. one. So like my pay and your pay were going into two different places. Okay. So maybe when we got married, maybe. we just got a joint checking like eventually, account. Yeah. Eventually we had a joint checking. Um, That's when it gets hard. That's when it's like, uh, <laughs> especially when like we moved to Dubai, for example, and when we would use the debit cards. Oh yeah, you get the notification. notification. I think you can do that here too. I have that on my phone hmm. for my own debit card. I can't see your debit cards. I don't even want to see my own debit card. I don't either. I want to buy something. I want to spend, I want to spend some money on something and just go like, that didn't even, <laughs> the transaction didn't even exist. Yeah, it's just, I didn't feel <laughs> I don't the paper. I didn't feel the money. It didn't, yeah. it didn't, it didn't happen. Didn't even buy it in person. I went, oh, yeah. I, went, I went on to this, the magical website that we're not going to name because they're evil, but I use them all the time. And also good, probably going to buy some stuff from there after the show. Oh, Maybe I'll buy some stuff from there mid pod, but, uh, and then it shows up at your door. it's frictionless. It's the closest yeah. thing. I've said this for years. It's the closest thing we have to magic. Mm. So copyright and trademark that I got two in this episode. <laughs> I dad, I dad and, and, uh, frictionless. No, no, no. Frictionless exists. Especially in a lot of older couples, you know? Your concept? You can't copyright a concept. No, it's a tagline. What is it? It's the closest thing we have to magic. Okay. Okay, cool. It's pretty good. So. <laughs> Question so. three. I'm concerned that my partner and I have different long-term goals in life, mm -hmm. and I'm scared that moving in with them might bring those to the front of our mm -hmm. relationship. Mm -hmm. Going back to that, the, 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 the living t with your parents thing. It's cool if it's short-term and you have, like, a bigger plan. Like, how much money do we need to have saved? How much time do we need? What does my parent situation need to look like for us to finally move like you need an end goal and it's like i want to have kids i don't want to have kids right now or i don't want to i don't see myself as a parent eventually but like i love you so like let's let's keep committing and no, see no, where no. this stop, goes stop kicking the can down the road i think it's it's also very different like at 19 and maybe like, oh my god yeah i mean it's different for everybody but i feel like there's not really an age I think part of it depends on how long you've been together yes. and also what your individual goals are. There are some people that are 22 and that are like, I want to be, I want to be married and have a couple of kids by 25. Sure. Miss me with that shit. But that was basically us. <laughs> I, got, I got you pregnant when we were 28, but Wasn't it 27 when I got pregnant and gave birth at 28. Nah, same year, 28. You sure? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I still don't believe you, but I'm going to got the job done. So you need to have these discussions. And I think, um, I think when, I think there's a lot of people, they'll get together and one person will say, 
it'll come up in conversation like, ah, do you want kids or not? And one person will say no. And the other person will say, well, I do. And they'll go, I think I can change that other person's mind. Hey, oh, yeah, absolutely. Right? Absolutely. And like kind of fuck you for absolutely. doing that. Absolutely. Fuck you for doing that and also getting mad at that person for being, for not changing their mind. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. Just like, and, and that's not to say that you're never going to change your mind. Sure. A lot of people do. Some couples, I bet, one doesn't, one does want kids. They mm. switch over time. I'm sure that's frustrating. That was us for a while. That was us. I think, so I always wanted two kids. You always wanted none or just one. Yeah. And I was like, uh, I'll have two. And then it kept, got to the point where like the decision was made for us. But we had, um, we had. That sounds cryptic. I'm sterile from chemotherapy. It sounds like, like we had a kid that died or something. Does it? I that, did. that choice was made for us? Well, it, it was. Yeah, anyway. I, just, I wanted to give further Yikes. context. I, gosh, I don't think it sounded that way at all. But okay, okay. Anyway, um. So we had the we had your sperm banked mm -hmm. as well. So like we could have made the decision. Oh, eventually we'll like get IVF. For example, it was more of like in my mind at least it was more of like should he change his mind eventually or should I even change my mind? Because after giving birth, I was like I did that and I don't want to do done. that again. Absolutely, but just as like a safety, a yeah. backup, a fail safe, sure. just in case. Yeah. Um, and then if when you were ready to make the call like last year, and you're like, yeah, I don't think. We need to keep storing this. I think I'm done. And then I first was like, yeah, sure. And you then hesitated. we were leaving. You hesitated. Was, we were leaving to go. And I, was, I started crying. I'm like, I can't do this. Don't yeah. make the decision yet. And that's not fair to you because you've always said, I only want one. Um, So yeah, I, I, I agree. I, it's so important to have these conversations ahead of time because once you start committing, it's so much harder to convince yourself or to come to the realization that you're just not on the same page about like, foundational things kids that's foundational whether like you do want them or you don't that's foundational to yeah. your your relationship same with like do you want to get married eventually do you yeah. not want to get married travel where do you see yourself do you want to travel the world or are you happy staying in you know the city town that we met yeah is it foundational things money like how what do you prioritize in terms of like do you care to invest in things? Do you care to build up your your bank, your savings account, for example? Do you want a house eventually? Or do you, are you just kind of like, let's spend this because we're going to die eventually and it doesn't come with us. So we should probably buy the Birkin and all the Brandon Blackwoods we can. Right. Did you want to say that directly into my phone so that I keep getting served <laughs> ads? I can't even. Like, I bought a gimbal yesterday. I can't even. You can't. I can't even. If y'all could only see this, what's surrounding us in this room right now, you can't. Luckily, that's been tucked out of view. And luckily, you're viewing it on the things that I yeah. bought. So <laughs> it's like, ugh, sorry about your luck. I guess we could hold up a mirror. But that's another thing. Like, really quickly before we move on, I mean, you and I also run a business. Mm -hmm. This is this is one of our business ventures. Mm -hmm. And it's really cool to be able to... We've always been creatives and, and we work in creative industries and it's really cool. It's really validating to be able to, I want to say like do this successfully, but that also feels like it, it takes away a lot of the, the intrinsic value of creativity. Because when I say <laughs> we're successful at it, you okay? <coughs> Sorry. No, don't be. Eventually. You got like that. We'll talk about this maybe later, but you got that scope coming up soon. Ugh, I don't but know. the coffin's been a lot better. I know. I know. That's why I surprised Good for you. when you came. Surprised when you came? <laughs> that's not and you what just, I you said. look so beautiful <laughs> and weren't expecting it. That's for the Bati. <laughs> sitting down. But it should be on my face. It's uh, really cool to like see what we've built, and and we celebrated uh, our business turned five. Yeah, now you can do it. Now you can do it. Turned five uh, this week, actually. This, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's really cool, and we've got I've got. Uh, it's so long. I know. And you just <laughs> look so beautiful. <laughs> it's um, yeah. It's just I feel like I'm I'm trying to make the same point over and over. <laughs> It's, it's, um, it's you know, it's like, it's, 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 it's validating. I, absolutely. I've had a couple of big pitches recently that mm -hmm. have gone really well. Mm -hmm. And I'm really excited for some more, uh, to just like keep sharpening my skills to use the ones that I have. And it's just, it's, it's so cool every day to see you do what you do and how you're changing the world and changing the you world. are though, you are, you're changing people's worlds. <laughs> no, you are though. Okay. You're not. Let's. 
it's, it's, it's you're shit at everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I found this. I, let's just because I don't I don't like this, but you do. Uh, you want your December horoscope? Yes. Okay. Okay. So I'm a cusp, I'm a cusp baby. So I'm Aries, but I'm also Taurus. I'm tuning out. Continue. You let me know when you're done. But I identify more as a Taurus, more of an earth sign than a fire sign. But okay, sure. You ready? April twentieth. Okay. So we missed this one. This is uh oh. Should have had this on my radar. December 1st, Mercury entered Capricorn. I don't know what that means. Hopefully they used protection. I'll use the same joke here. December 4th, Venus enters Scorpio. Hope they use protection. Cool, sir. <laughs> uh, December 12th, this is a double header. New moon in Sagittarius and Mercury's going to be in Gatorade. That begins in Capricorn. Then, December 21st, it's Cap season, baby. Hey, all my Capricorns out there. Should I they think. micro braids? Yes. But not where they have like the, where it's like. Uh, you don't like the boho style when the hair is hanging out from no. the braid. You don't like that? No. I love that. Like a tight, crisp braid. Don't no. need to be micro. I like the thicker ones as well. Just get locks. Okay. Just get locks with some blonde and some of that fucking jewelry shit in it. And also something you can tug on, not the jewelry. That'll come out immediately. That stuff's so cheap. And what else do we have here? Mercury, uh, Gatorade enters Sagittarius. December 26th, Boxing Day, full moon in Cancer. Uh oh. Listen, I don't know what I already had that means. twice. Oh my God. <laughs> Hold on. And then finally, Venus enter enters Sagittarius. That's December 29th. What is my horoscope? We're just n mentioning planets. I don't know. It just said your December horoscope. I thought that's what that meant. I thought that you were going to tell me about my life. And how I should Oh, end here we the go. Year. So you want Taurus or Aries? Taurus. Okay. Unless I don't like it, then Aries. You ready for this? Absolutely. Good news is coming. Period. Love that. Uh, Say less. Taurus, you're thinking hard at the start of the month. Sagittarius season invites you to reflect on who and what you invest in and the concept of reciprocity, both financially and emotionally. Reparations. I stay thinking about that. Trust me. Trust me. Love this. One time I said to someone that I support reparations and they were like, yeah, just because you're married to a black person. Who said that? It's like a, a random. Do I know this person? No. I don't even Do know I this know person. Do I know this person? No, it was someone I said it on my radio show and they texted in. So <laughs> I was like, that, I, guess I was like, that is, that is kind of funny. You would, but you would benefit from that's it. That's not why I would. Just don't even give me any of the money, right? Oh, absolutely not. Just keep it to yourself. Yeah, that's. Just put yeah. it in our joint checking account. And I won't, I'll spend other money. I won't spend that money. I'll just leave that alone. So, uh, once Capricorn season kicks off mid month, your curiosity is taking over. Let's hope so. Over the rest of the month, you may be immersing yourself in learning something new or setting big picture goals. We've talked about like you got a vision board for next year, right? We got to do that. Yes, we want to do that later this week. I'm gonna vision. I'm gonna vision note. I'm gonna write notes. I don't want to. I don't <laughs> well, want to. Like, what kind of sentence was that? I don't want to print shit. Notes. I'm good. I'm good with that. Okay. Well, yeah. There's different ways of vision boarding. You can do it digitally. You can use Canva. Many people do that. Oh, I forgot about this. We got to hit this because I feel like you might go on it. I feel like you might go on a tear in a sec. Hold on. <coughs> you good? <laughs> I'm tired of coughing. Yeah. Yes. You know, you're doing great though. Okay, so this is a tweet that went pretty viral, and like, uh, maybe it's real, maybe it's not. I feel like this might belong on the subreddit, that happened. But uh, someone posted on Twitter that a child had run up to her dog after she blocked the child from reaching the dog and said, maybe we don't run up to dogs we don't know. The child's parent responded, she's three. I feel like I might say like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. She's only three. We're trying to teach her these things. Yeah, because if the dog does something to your kid, then the, you're going to be pissed off. So, I'd like, be happy that this person is protecting your kid from the potentially dangerous dog or overly excitable dog. Either way, your kid's in potential danger. Yeah, a cab, but I'm calling the cops on your dog. I'm only calling the cops on animals. That's it. So. Okay. Yeah. The, like, your dog hurts my child. The dog, like, needs to die, right? You got to put that dog down. Oh, they're going to That's what they make you do. You in the comments. That's what they make you do though. Listen, dog people. They want nothing other than rights for dogs. 
They don't want to hear that the dog was potentially dangerous. They don't want to hear that a child was hurt. You mentioned that a dog could potentially be anything other than perfect and angelic. The dog people will come for you. The cops have dogs. How mm. good could dogs be? <laughs> Last line of the tweet. Me. So this is where they're setting up for the kill, right? Not of the dog, but of they're just kind of like, I'm going to wreck this. So this is the dog person? Yeah. Okay. Last line. If she isn't on voice recall, I guess that's like when you say to a dog like, hey, Mr. Pickles, come back. Maybe she should be leashed. Okay, that's ridiculous. They're both ridiculous. They're Fighting both words. absolutely ridiculous Fighting humans. Words. That's so stupid. First of all, the, the parents are stupid for getting mad at or showing attitude to this person who potentially protected your kid. And this dog person is stupid for suggesting that a child who was learning and developing should be on a leash because they're not on voice recall, whatever the hell that means. Here's the thing about kids on leashes. Logically, makes a lot of sense, <laughs> right? Like they're running around all over the place. You just like, you got them on a leash, not around the neck, around like the body harness. Also dogs and all animals. What are we doing with the neck collar, body collar, and uh, that you keep them out of harm's way. And they have fun ones, like in backpacks. You see kids at Disney World. A lot of kids getting kidnapped there. They've got them on the backpack leashes. Let's be honest. You see white kids on leashes. You don't see any other race putting their kid in on leashes. Yeah. Ever. Nor should I they. I have not. Seen Optically, it not great. I don't know. Like, if your kid is is known to wander off, like, doesn't focus well, whatever, and it's truly a safety thing for your child... Okay. Okay. <laughs> I think if you're leashing your kid, and again, not for me, maybe for you, maybe should be illegal, I don't know. I think like if you're tethered to your child, that's a little bit different. The leash thing where it's like you got it in your hand and you're like yanking your kid back, not ideal. But I think if like you and your kid are like, like a couple of, uh, like when you're on a chain gang in a 1930s prison movie, right? Where you're like cuffed to each other. I'm okay with that, I think. Again, what? Not for me. Like prison, you're 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 okay with children being? No, I'm not a Republican. Like imprisoned. What I mean is like, not a fan of the leash, I guess. Okay. But uh, I feel like it maybe looks better if like you're like you got a belt loop. You're chained to your child. And you're 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 tie into one of the kids' belt loops. That was you. That. <laughs> okay. Again, not for me. Maybe for you. Oh, I hope. I hope not. I hope no one is chaining themselves to their child. I mean, like emotionally, yeah. Sure. That's why you have them, right? It's, it's, to download all of your insecurities onto them. So. <sighs> What's our next segment? Pillow Talk. Pillow Talk is more of an intimate uh, segment where we talk about our relationship, intimacy. Get closer to the mic. Relationship. Yeah. Intimacy. This is actually really oh turning on. No, keep doing it. There's like two people that think my voice is sexy. Everybody thinks yours is. I, I don't know who those people are. Honestly, all my life I've hated my voice. Everybody. Everybody. Let's get some love in the comms. The entire world. Yeah. Everybody. You get a sexy ass voice, bro. Thank you. I've I've never I've always hated my voice. And when you first had me on your like your radio shows, I would never wear my headphones because I don't want to hear myself. Now you're a narcissist though. I'm I'm a narcissist. You've evolved. <laughs> Okay, so the first two weeks, uh, you had the question. Yes. This week, the question is from me. You ready for okay. this? Okay, all right. How can you better embrace your femininity, and how can I help? And for the record, that might sound kind of out of pocket, like Absolutely. I'm saying, hey, if you could act more like a chick. Yeah. But this is something that you've been asking for <laughs> for a while, or, or not asking for, but you've been... Uh, Alluding to, mentioning. You've been voicing this. You're like, I want to feel more feminine. I want to feel softer. I need the space for it. How can mm -hmm. I give you that space? What can, what are the resources I can give to you? Well, if I can give a little bit of context, when I say I want to be like in my feminine in my femininity, what I mean by that is like feeling soft, um, not always feeling like I need to have my guard you? up. My, my I I made a shea butter moisturizer the other day. Very I nice. I smell good. Is I that like skin is soft? Penis safe. <laughs> Is it? No, probably not. It's not like, it's not, no. Is Stick it gritty? To coconut oil. Uh, there are parts, like it's harder. Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. Don't. 
anyway, what I mean by that is that I want to be like in my softness. I want to feel protected. I don't always want to feel like I have to have my guard up and ready, um, like stressed out and and ready to. Um, the woman I met, for the record, I have was, not I have whew, not turned her into this. this I, I'm born that way. Yeah. Born, well, you know what? Developed over my childhood, feeling the need to always have to defend myself and be ready because at any point I may need to pounce has been t- it's been a, a, a way I've lived be- through childhood through I've been taught to live that way why am I losing words it's too late to shoot a podcast at this hour and also the independence thing we talked about earlier yeah where you're like I feel I'm really afraid of losing that mm-hmm. so how can we give you the confidence how can you develop the confidence to feel like you can lean on me more mm. as your partner as your mm-hmm. BFF as the father of your child, as your roommate, as my your my housemate, lunch buddy, well, I get you know get lunch how sometimes. Can you, how can you help me to embrace my softness? Yeah, is another way of phrasing that. I guess. Sure. Um, I think consistency is a huge thing. Um, when I speak about my my childhood and where I learned to be harder and to. I guess, embrace my masculinity and to protect myself is because I lacked a lot of consistency. Mm. So I had to be my own consistency. I had to show up for myself and I had to be ready. Um, So today, uh, not that I don't know that you're going to be there for me every day, but like we're, we very much had different chapters of our, of our marriage, right? So we're, we've recently entered into a new chapter where like you're in good health and you're back to work and Nia's in daycare and I'm able to go to the office ooh, every couple of weeks, for example. So this is a, still a newer chapter for me. So I think getting used to the consistency, getting used to Coulter is here. Coulter is my partner. Col- I'm not the default parent, for example. Coulter is available to also wash Nia's hair and... Do a pretty good job, by the absolutely, way. Absolutely, absolutely. Sunday nights, that's my thing. I can't, like, I'm not doing designs and stuff. I'm not doing her hair. You're not doing hair. her hair, but you're but, washing like, washing her hair. it, yeah. deconditioning. So, like, even that, for example, like, when you were speaking to me earlier today, and you're like, what do you need from me tonight? I'm like, I'm just stressed because I'm thinking about all the things I need to do tonight, including doing Nia's hair. And you're like, I'll do her hair. If you hit that button. If, Coulter, Coulter. I'm just, I'm just massaging it all over. <laughs> Just getting it ready. Just getting Dude, it a little I hit moist. that damn button. <clears throat> so stuff like that. But you can um, cough. Okay. That I'm consistently coughing. Absolutely. The mute button's so, going to be here next week, by the way. I thought you found the mute button. No, I had to buy it. And they had to ship it. You can't buy any of them here. They have to ship them all internationally. Haven't you muted me before? Yeah, but like, I don't know. This way, I don't know when you're going to cough. Oh, so that's why I hit it hit and the I button, cough. Hit the button, mutes your microphone. You're not going to hear it from your mic. Yeah, a little bit, maybe. Okay, but not so, like, blaringly. Let's say ASMR for y'all. My buddy Adam's going to come over and, like, he does sound design. He's an audio engineer. You met Adam before. We saw Oppenheimer together. He came over here and we watched that shitty horror movie, Skin of Marink. I met him? Yeah. Anyway, lovely fella. And uh, he's going to come over and, like, help us with the sound. Did he meet me? I think so. Anyway, uh, please continue. (laughs) Consistency. That's it. That's it. It's like getting used to... Um, what our new, uh, our new chapter looks like, and our new partnership based on that looks like. Um, and like I think continuing what you're doing because you really are doing. I see that you're intentionally trying to have me, trying to have me in my softness, trying to have me in my femininity. Um, so I do see that you are, um, definitely trying. You're being very intentional about like having me. Um, in my softness, it, having me like just... listen, we both want to be in your softness, so bad. <laughs> I set that so up. Bad. I just, I just fucking set them up. Could you set it up? Uh, anyways, because you're like, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm all about that. Was that your email? Might have been. Do you dare have your audio on while we're shooting this podcast? Do you I even so. care about this? Oh, I got a. It's a, it's an email from our accountant about this show. So, oh, yeah. Okay, you can do that. That's fancy. Okay. Well, like thanks that. for letting me know. It's very adult. Uh, should I ask you the same question? Like you asked me 
the other day. I will not fidget uh, about submitting to one's partner. Yeah, we talked about but, it last on last week's episode, and I was like, oh, I'm kind of like cringy or whatever. But uh, you know, just like listen, I'm a simple guy. You know what I want. You know what I want. So some just like you know, you. some please and thank you. That's you know. I I'm very good with my manners. Hit me up. Terrific manners, but like you know, let's see let's see the manners a little more often. Because when you remember your manners, oof, oof. <laughs> It's just like sometimes we forget to say please and thank you, right? So, okay. Yeah. Commercial break? We need commercials first. Uh, okay, we're going to end this with a uh, little comment section action. Thank you for your comments, your questions, concerns. Um, also, real quick before we get into this, we're like 17 subscribers short of 1,000. I mean, come on. Yes. Once we hit a thousand, we can start monetizing this, which means I can have more email notifications from our accountant. And also <laughs> it means um, it means we're a little bit closer. We appreciate this. If you've made it this far in the pod, we'd love a subscribe. And if, you know, you can somehow let us go back in time and I should do this at the beginning of the episode, really, that would be great. But okay. What's the goal by the end of the year? End of this year? We only have four episodes left. If we get it 15 hunch by December 31st, that'd be great. Okay, that's the goal. And then next year, I'm hoping we can hit like 50 thou. So you're talking YouTube specifically, YouTube correct? specifically. Okay. 1,500 on YouTube. Yeah. All right, let's make it happen. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is from Mercury Rainbow One on YouTube. Super excited for this podcast. You guys are awesome, and I'm excited for y'all to blow up even more than you already oh. have. Y'all are awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Mercury Rainbow oh. One. My guy OCD. Shout out, fellow <laughs> OCD. Yours, that's the name. Okay. <laughs> no, it is. I, 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 yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for letting us listen in your interactions. You guys are so cute and goals. I hope that whatever I decide to start dating again, I get to be in a relationship with great communication like yours is. From what I see, you guys make me believe that true love exists. Keep up the great work Aww. with three hearts. Thank you. I, I'm weary of being called goals on the internet because like no, anything take you say. There's been a lot of work, a lot of therapy, tens of thousands of dollars of therapy, therapy have gone into this. So. Both uh, both individually and together. Um, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you very much. This is from a boy chemtrail guy. Curly fries suck. Okay. I think to say they suck is a huge overstatement. No, this guy's a fucking idiot. This, curly fries suck? They don't suck. What? Curly the fries, greatest, the, no, the curly fry is the greatest fry. That's ridiculous. Seasoned? You're both ridiculous. No. They're, they're okay. Listen, we got an Arby's, like, I'd say like a 10 minute drive away. Ah, it's Do probably we? closer to 15. Yeah. The one by, um, what is I don't it know. on? I'm not going to go. I don't eat Arby's. I'm so sorry. I think it's near the Costco. The Costco? Yeah. I like There's 90. multiple Costco. Near the Costco. <laughs> uh, it's near the, anyway. I'm not going to go. Anyway. It's probably not even around Costco. Regardless, we need some Arby's in us. I think it's on Taunton. Ah, I, I got to get out of this. Okay. Curly fries are awesome. Uh, at lily.love000 says, did Where's this, Instagram? This is Instagram. Okay. It says, did y'all have any other baby names instead of Nia? So for context, we got one kid and her name is Nia. Which means purpose. Which means purpose. In Swahili. Yes. Um, we did have another name in mind. You need to remind me. Sloan, like from Ferris Bueller's Day Off, the you see girlfriend how much of your mouth. It comes Sloan. Sloan. It's just, it's a weird no. It's, I, I, if that's your name, shout out and to And people you, might call her but, slow, right? Right. That's pretty mean. And like not that clever. Not. Yeah. Because it just sounds like you haven't finished the name, right? And that might become her nickname. Slow, what's up? <laughs> you don't want that, right? So that was the other option. And we did have. A name, if uh, she was a boy, I just don't remember it. Mm. I always liked Asante. Demarcus? Oh. I always liked Asante, which means uh, thank you in Swahili, I believe. Mm. Um, you did not like it. No. Well. Okay. I mean, I like the please and thank you, but thank you on its own. <sighs> so at Lily.love000 again asks, did you ever think you would marry a person of color? I'm going to assume she's asking me. I want you to not answer this. Thank you, please, very much. Um, you don't want me to answer this no, question? I don't, I don't. Why not? I'm nervous. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm nervous. 
Did I ever? I will respect. uh, I will submit to you. uh, Did I ever think I'll marry a person of color? I absolutely did. I only dated black men. Nah. I only dated men of color. Yeah. Before you. Um, And then I dated this guy. No bleach pens, eh? I was the first and the last. Bleach pens. Um, I said that on TikTok one time and someone flagged it for racism. I'm like, first off, you can't be racist against white people. And also, I wasn't calling anyone in particular a bleach pen. And also, is that a race thing? I don't know. I'm just asking if questions. Not, what is it? Something to take stains out of your shirt. Right. So. Uh, next question. At Ash Talon, Talon, at Ash Talon asks, how do, you, how do you split kid duties? No, oh, babe, you're just so much better at this than I am. I... I handle stuff like uh, dentist, doctor, like appointments like that. I still got to get her vaccinated. God, I got to get on that. And clearly I'm not doing a great job. <laughs> and like we said earlier, like I handle washing her hair on Sunday nights. Dominique handles doing her hair, like putting it in a fun little design with some bubbles and some hair bands and stuff like that. It really just comes down to our schedules. Yeah. So in the morning, I start work at 9 a.m. So... Uh, Coulter handles the morning stuff. He wakes her up. He gets her ready for daycare. He drops her off to daycare. And then in the evening time, he has an evening time job. Dom City, baby. Dom so I, City. I pick her up from daycare. I give her dinner, get her dressed, and really washed and dressed for bed. And then I take over and I brush her teeth. I put her to bed, get her dressed, moisturized, obviously. And uh, maybe not so obvious for the bleach pens out there, but you should be doing it. And also... We read a book. We sing some songs. You might come in and say goodnight as well. You typically do. Mm-hmm. And then it's nine o'clock and I'm and like, wow. we lock the door and she's yeah, not allowed. That's to it. Um, but that's what weekdays look like. But in terms of weekends, um, we kind of follow the same thing. We're like, if she wakes up, I'll take the morning unless like you didn't sleep. If you didn't sleep well, then I'll take mornings sure. or vice versa. Thank whatever. you for that, by the way. It's nice to just kind of rest, you know? <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, you'll typically take it to dance class on like a Sunday morning. Yeah. Um, so you'll have her like on a Sunday morning so that like later on in Sunday afternoon, she's more with me and we're like watching a movie together or playing, coloring and yeah. whatever. We It's never going to be 50-50. Let me say that. It will never be 50-50. But if you stepped like it up a little bit, it might be. Is. So. Um, and realistically, like... I am the default parent because I'm I'm able to work from home, so I'm closer to daycare. If she ha- runs a fever, I'm able to drop everything and drive over. He's not. He's he's like ninety minutes away, for example. So I'm on air. It's difficult exactly. to like. Exactly. You know. Exactly. So we like we try to approach this so that it's equitable, not necessarily mm. equal. Like if I'm here, it just makes equitable sense that I'm the one to go rather than calling you sure. hey can you turn off the radio and come get yeah. doesn't make sense can you turn off the radio <laughs> all right guys we're fucking done till tomorrow this is playing house episode three thank you for listening you can follow dominique on all socials at dom creates but on instagram it has a dot at dom dot creates i'm working on it but on tiktok it's just at dom creates at Coulter talks Coulter with a k you're probably here already and i love you so much <laughs> And we're going to go upstairs and uh, practice our manners. I love you.